Welcome to March's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is reorder power of 2. Starting with a positive integer n, we reorder the digits in any order, including the original order, such that the leading digit is not 0. Now return true if and only if we can do this in such a way that the resulting number is a power of 2. So with 1, we know that 2 to the 0 power is well, also 1, so that's going to be true. 10, no matter how we rearrange 10, we can't form a number that's going to be the power of 2. Right, 16, yes, that's true. Uh, but n46, we can rearrange that to 64, and that's going to be a power of 2. So the very first instinct here is to take this number and find all the different permutations, then check to see if we can, any of those numbers are to the power of 2. right? Uh, but before we go that way, we should realize that instead of doing that, there's far less numbers that are power of 2 that are going to be within these constraints than there are the number of different permutations that we might be able to form uh, for any number. Uh, that's also considering the number can't have a zero as a starting digit, so uh, that's going to be a lot slower and trickier to write. So instead, it'd be a lot easier to just take this number that we have, count up the number of digits that we have. So here we have one four and one six. And what we can do is go through a loop of all the different power of twos that we can form. Uh, we can just build that up. And if any of those have the same number of digits, um, then we know that we can rearrange it to form that number that's going to be the power of two. We don't really have to know what the exact number is. As long as we know that there's the same number of digits, then we know we can rearrange it. OK, so what I'll do is first create a counter object. Um, I'll have to create a counter object. And what I'll do is first convert this number to a string and we'll say for i in string of n we'll reconvert this back to an integer uh, and we don't have to do this but just uh, just just to be a little cleaner we'll, uh, we'll do that and now we want to loop through all the different numbers that are power of 2 but they have to be less or equal to 10 to the power of 9 uh, so what I'll do is start with n that's going to be the number that we check and i is going to be like our iterator so start with zeros here. We'll say while n is less than or equal to 10 to the ninth power, first we will calculate our n, which is going to be 2 to the ith power, and we'll check. Uh, we'll create a counter object and just check to see if they're the same. So we'll call this d, and we'll say if c equals d, then we turn true, because obviously we could rearrange our number n to form this number n here. And so we know that we can return true. Otherwise, uh, we'll continue our loop, but we'll increase our i by 1. Now, if we come out of this loop, we couldn't find anything within the constraint of 1 to 10 to the 9th power. Then we have to return a false, because there was nothing like that. So what I'll do here is I'm going to write some test cases. 46, I don't know, uh, 16, 22, something like that. Let's see if this works. True, 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 false. It looks like it's working, so let's go ahead and submit that. And there we go, accepted. So this technically is going to be constant space um, because we know that um, there's only a certain amount of numbers that are to the power of 2 in between 1 to the 10th and 9th, uh, 9th, 9th power. Uh, but we do use extra space because of, of this counter object. Uh, but hey, I mean, I think this is most intuitive and a lot faster. It's much better than definitely finding all the different permutations and then checking to see if all those are uh, a power of two, right? Okay, so hope that helps. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.